AI is not going to replace us, at least for now. Here are five ways AI can help us as a photographer or as a photo researcher. Number one, getting unlimited backgrounds and overlays. With the help of AI, it's more easier to get realistic overlays and apply it to your image. Let me show you how it works. Just come to your browser and just come to this website, firefly.adobe.com and just click on OK. Now for me, all you have to do is just click on this box and just type in what you want. So I'm going to type artistic cloud background and just hit generate right here. Now you can see right now, it has generated some image for us, but we can do more with this. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change this content type to image. Once I change it to image, from here, you can choose to upload a reference image. So let's say, for example, I like this background right here and I want to generate similar. All I have to do is come back to my browser, click on this reference image and just upload that image right here as my reference image so that I can generate similar image to that image. So I'm going to click continue. Also, I'm going to scroll the way down, come to this style, upload that same image as my reference image and just click on open. And from here, I'm going to scroll the way down and just change this to hyper realistic right here. I'm going to click on it. And from here, I'm going to click on generate. So you can see right now, it has generated similar image to the one we uploaded. So this is the first one. The second one, the third one, we have four different variations as you can see right here. Now you can download this image and just use it as your overlay. So I'm going to click on download right now. I'm just going to save on my download and I can apply this background to my image. So it's as simple as that. The number two way AI can help us as a retoucher or as a photographer is image upscale. So if you have a low quality image like this one and you want to upscale it or boost the quality, you can actually use AI to increase the resolution. To do that, just come to your browser and just type in image upscale on Google. Now there are different software or different applications you can actually use to upscale your image. I'm going to be using this image upscaler right here so you can have an idea of how it works. So after you search image upscale on Google, just scroll the way down, you're going to see image upscaler. This image upscaler does come. So I'm going to click on it and just going to open the website for me. So from here, all I have to do is just drag and drop or click on this plus icon and just look for the image which I want to upscale and just open it and upload it on this website right here. Now you can upscale multiple images. So you have to do just click and just add more image if you want to upscale it. But for the sake of this tutorial, let me just use this one right here. So you can upscale to 200% or you can also upscale to 400%. So let's just upscale to 400% to get the best quality. So I'm going to click on start right here and just let the AI do its thing. All right, let's finish upscaling. Now to see the before and after, just click on this AI icon right here to view the before and after. So let's just wait for it to load. All right, let's quickly see the before and after. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. So I'm going to download this one right now and let's put it side by side. So I'm going to click on download right here. So this one right here is the original. Why this one right here is the enhanced. So you can see the difference, right? Like I said earlier, some obscure software are better than others, but you get the idea of how it actually works. The third way AI can help us as a photographer or as a researcher is skill retouching or photo editing. With the help of AI, it's never be easier to do skill retouching or photo editing. Take software like the Retouch of Me, the Reblop, or the Inventoria as an example. So with the Retouch of Me, let's say I want to remove the blemishes for this image. All I have to do is duplicate my background layer by pressing on Ctrl J. It just comes to my filter come to retouch on me and just click on heal right here and the retouch on me AI is just going to do its thing and try to remove the blemishes for us all right so if I just zoom in and show you the before and after let's see so take a look at the image this is the before and the after the before and the after and with the sensitivity slider you can choose the amount of blemishes you want to remove from your image and the amount of blemishes you want to keep on your image so I'm going to take my eye to 100% I'm just going to remove 100% of the blemishes. So from here, I'm just going to click on apply right here. So let's take the before and after. So the before and the after. The before and the after. Of course, it's not perfect, but it's a good way to start. And not just remove the blemishes. You can actually do my code and bond with the retouch on me. So I'm going to create a stand visible layer by pressing on command option shift E or control shift alternate E if you're using Windows. You just come back to my filter again, come to retouch on me and just click on the jump on right here again it's just going to load 
and try to do our micro day jam bomb for us so let me just zoom in so you can see the before and the after the before and the after all right look at the body the before and the after and also from here you can choose the blend which is how much of the jam bomb you want the ai to help you do so let's take the blends to about 200 percent it's just going to do more of micro day jam bomb so see the before and after the before and the after the before and the after or if you feel it's too much you can just take it down a little bit like this now for me i'm going to click on soft light layer and just click on apply now for me you can see where is this the micro day jam bomb for us now you have to do for me just come to your blend mode and change it from normal to soft light and bring the image back to normal so let me just group everything i did so you can see where we started from and where we are right now so the before in the after and not just the heel and micro the jam you can actually do so much more with the touch of me ai so you can actually copy color from another image and put it on your image you can use the touch of me AI to clear a backdrop you can use to do your contact the jam one so there's a lot you can actually do with the touch of me ai and i believe in link where you can get the touch of me ai in the short video of this video and if you use that link you're going to get 25 percent off any purchase you make right now so that's for the touch of me but still on the topic on how ai can help you edit or retouch your image if you're a photographer or you're a retoucher that wants that minimal or natural looking edit, they need to try the real long retouch. So to use that, I'm going to get my bugger there by pressing up command J. And just go to my filter and come to real long retouch right here and just click on it. Now, on like retouch for me, the Google application is super easy to use and also it gives you a natural looking result. So we just allow it to load right now. And you can see that then you have two options on that is there. You have the natural and the fashion. Now the natural is just going to make your image look natural and just do minimum edits to your image now for the natural let's see the before and after so this is the before and the after the before and the after you can see just move the blemishes and the image is still looking natural now let's try the fashion right here so the fashion is more intense than the natural but it still looks natural at the same time all right so let's just let it load right now so you can see the fashion and compare it with the natural so this is the fashion see the before and the after the before and the after it's a little bit more intense than natural but you have the ability to actually reduce the intensity of the dodge and burn and also bring back more of the texture if you want to with this intensity with this general and texture slider right here but i think i'm just going to leave it at 100 percent and just click ok and just show me the before and after of the reblum retouch so for the reblum let's see the before and after you can see how natural the image is looking see the before and the after the before and the after so the reblum method is super easy to use and you can try it up for free for several days if you use the link in the description below of this video so one more example on how i can actually help you edit or touch your image is by using the evoto ai so if you want to download evoto i have a link in the link in the description below of this video as well unless i want to remove the blemishes for this image all i have to do is just move this focal or acne slider right here i'm just going to automatically remove the blemishes from my image just like that so see the before and the after we just want slider all right now if i want to move the blemishes from the body as well all i have to do is click on this body blemishes right here and just increase it i'm just going to remove any blemishes we have on the body just like that super super easy to use so the before and the after now what if i want to do my micro jumbo of course separation all I have to do is just come to my screen retouching right here. Now under this screen retouching, we have the dodge and burn. All I have to do is just move this dodge and burn slider. And this Evoto AI will automatically do my micro dodge and burn for me. You can see how smooth the face is looking already. What about focus separation? All I have to do is come to this face skin smooth right here. And just move it up like this. I'm just going to do the focus separation for me. Now you can see how smooth this image is looking already. But I think it's too smooth. So I'm going to take the focus separation down and take the micro dodge and burn up to 100% just like that now for the body if i want to smoothen out the body all i have to do is come to this body skin smoothen i just take it up like this i'm just going to smoothen out the body for me so take a look at the before and after this is the before and the after the before and the after and there's a lot of things you can do with this evoto ai so basically evoto ai is the powered ai that help you retouch and edit your image and if you want to watch more about how Evoto AI actually works, I'll be leaving the link in the description below of this video as well. Now, the number four way AI can help us as a photographer or as a retoucher, especially as a retoucher, is the generative expand. 
So let's say I want to curve this image and change it to landscape. Once I pick my curve tool and just change this to 4 by 5 and just change it to landscape. All right. So if I want to put this image right here as a landscape like this, if I use the content aware field, so let me just try content aware field first and just hit OK. As you can see, the image is going to look odd and unrealistic, as you can see right now. Now let's try it using the generative expanse. I'm going to save this one. So I'll go to my history and just put this out right there and just save it. All right. So I'm just going to undo this and come back to my image right here. Now I'm going to call this image using the generative expand so you can see the effect. All right. So I want to move it up like so and just click on this field right here and click on generative expand and just click on OK. Now with the generative response, Photoshop AI will automatically try to fill that place for us and make it look realistic that it was shot like that. And it's going to give us still variation. So let's just wait for it to generate right now. And if I'm in Nigeria, it's going to take a while before it generates because our network is really, really, really bad. So let's just be patient and just wait for it to generate. All right, now you can see this is the first variation. You can see it's looking so much better than the content aware. So let's try the second variation and see. So this is the second variation and also this is the third variation. So I think this third one looks even more better. So this is generative expand and let's compare it to the content aware. So I come to my history I click on content aware crop. You can see how all this looks. There are some choices inside the work. Now this is the generative expand. So you can see how realistic it looks. So with the generative expand, no matter the situation you are, you can actually crop your image and expand it the way you actually want it. And the fifth way AI can help us as a photographer or as a retoucher is the generative fill. Now with the generative fill, you can actually add elements to your image. So let's say I want to add birds to the sky of this image. What I want to do, I'm going to pick this new Photoshop tool, which is the selection brush. So I'm going to make a selection of where I want the birds to be. So I'm going to paint on this place right here another place right here another one right here another one right here and maybe another one right here and just come to my generative fee and if you can find your generative fee just come to your windows and make sure contextual tags bar is checked so if i want to check it right now you can see it's no longer there so I'll come back to my windows and just make sure contextual tags bar is checked now this option is only available in the official version of photoshop all right now after making a selection of where i want to put those beds i'm going to click on generative fee and just type white white beds and click on generate all right so it has been generating we have three variations so this is the first variation the second variation and the third variation so i think i like this first variation more better and not just to add elements you can actually remove elements from your image using the generative field so let's say for this image i want to fix this chair right here so what i have to do is just make a selection of this patch right here now let's say I want to remove this magazine on the chair. So I want to make a selection of this magazine as well. Now let's say I want to remove this clothes on the chair as well. I'm going to make a selection of the clothes right here on the chair. And this time I'm going to click on generative field. And once I click on generative field, I'm going to type remove and click on generate. So Photoshop AI will automatically fix the place for us. So we have three variations as usual. So this is the first one, the second one, and the third one. So I prefer this third one. So let's see the before and after. So see the before and the after the before and the after now there are a lot of ways AI can help us as a photographer or as a retoucher but these are the five ways i personally use AI for my workflow i hope you find this video helpful and if you want to watch how to retouch your image using the retouch on me ai check out this video right here i'll see you guys in my next one stay creative